Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Episodic. I'm Barry P. Cook, and I'm here to talk to you about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So let's get into a plot breakdown. As it starts, it's 16 months after the destruction of the Alchemax Collider, which took place in... which was on Earth-56, where Gwen Stacy is struggling to live up to the expectations of her father, who doesn't know she's Spider-Woman. And he is hunting her in revenge because of his belief that she caused the death of Peter Parker in that universe. One night after hearing about a possible intruder in the Guggenheim Museum, she heads over to confront the threat only to run into a Renaissance-themed vulture that comes from an alternate universe. And it was pretty crazy because the universe he comes from was kind of like paper-based, if that makes any sense. You kind of have to see it to understand it, but he was like a paper mache or a, 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 a being or a, a, a paper-based being. It's very strange. Anyway, shortly afterward, Miguel O'Hara and Jessica Drew arrive through portals and subdue Vulture. In the aftermath, Gwen reveals herself to her father, who is distraught and attempts to arrest her. Drew suggests to a reluctant O'Hara that Gwen join the Spider Society, which he begrudgingly goes along with. The Spider Society, of course, is a group of Spider-Men from across the Spider-Verse who are in the business of keeping the Spider-Verse from unraveling because of anomalies. The three then leave Earth-65. Back on Earth-1610 in Brooklyn, Miles Morales is adapting to being Spider-Man as well as struggling to live up to his parents' expectations while mourning the departure of Gwen. On the day of an evaluation at school with his parents, he visits a convenience store where he encounters Spot, a scientist who got infused with portals all over his body in the aftermath of the explosion of the collider at Alchemax. After a brief fight, Miles subdues Spot, but he eventually breaks out and confronts him again and brings him to Alchemax, blaming him for his dilemma before accidentally transporting himself into a void where he begins using his portals to travel to other universes with the Alchemax Collider. Later, Gwen goes to see Miles while secretly watching Spot, who created his own collider and is becoming even more dangerous. Drew contacts Gwen and instructs her to leave Miles behind to confront Spot, but unbeknownst to them, Miles follows them into the portal. In Mumbatton on Earth 50101, Mumbatton being Manhattan only Mumbai style, which is really interesting, they encounter Pavtir Prabhakar and Hobie Brown, who are different Spider-Men, before confronting Spot in the Alchemex Collider on that Earth, whereupon he successfully absorbs the device's power before escaping. Mumbatton begins falling apart from the disruption of a canon event after Miles saves the police captain there, who turns out to be Probokar's girlfriend's father. Members of the Spider Society arrive to assess the damage of the dimensional anomaly, while Miles, Gwen, Probokar, and Brown are sent to the headquarters on Earth 928, where hundreds of Spider-Man variants reside. They meet up with O'Hara, who tells Miles that he is risking the destruction of the multiverse, as Miles was not supposed to be in Mumbatton. Though Peter B. Parker arrives to defend Miles with his daughter, Mayday, O'Hara explains how canon works in each Spider-Man story and the fabric of the multiverse, and that all Spider-Men must suffer sacrifices to maintain a stable multiverse. Miles realizes that his father, newly appointed as captain, will be dying at the hands of Spot, and that such is a canon event, and flees to save him, causing Brown to quit the society, and O'Hara to order all the spider people to apprehend Miles. After a long chase, O'Hara strikes down Miles, telling him that he never was supposed to become Spider-Man, with the spider that bit him actually being from an alternate universe, making Miles the first canon anomaly ever. Miles breaks free, heading back to his homeworld to save his father. Seeing Gwen as a liability because she's sympathetic to Miles, O'Hara kicks her out and sends her back to her universe. When she realizes her father has resigned as police captain, Gwen believes that canon events can be rewritten because he was also a captain and was supposed to die, which she was just going to let happen out of fealty to, you know, the bigger picture. But she realizes when he tells her that he's resigned, that canon doesn't have to occur and that it won't necessarily unravel anything. She then goes to find Miles, and she leaves her universe using a bootleg multiverse traveling watch that Brown had given to her father, addressed to her. Arriving back in his apartment, Miles reveals to his mother that he's Spider-Man, whom she appears not to recognize. 
Encountering his uncle, Aaron Davis, very much alive, Miles realizes that he's on Earth-42, the dimension home of the spider that originally bit him, where his father has already died. And he also realizes that this world has no Spider-Man. Aaron interrogates Miles as to who he is, while Miles thinks that Aaron is the Prowler, but he soon realizes that he's not, even though on Miles' own Earth he was, before he meets the Miles of Earth-42, who has in fact become the Prowler. O'Hara, Drew, and Ben Riley arrive to find Miles on Earth 1610, just as the spot arrives to kill Miles' father. Gwen, after speaking with Rio and Jefferson, Miles' parents on Earth 1610, assembles a team with Peter B. Parker, Mayday, Probocar, Brown, Margot Kess, Spider-Man Noir, Penny Parker, and Spider-Ham to find Miles, who it would seem is about to be taken out by his other self, the Prowler, who doesn't want to let him go back to his Earth to save his father because he's crazy. <laughs> and that's where it ends on a cliffhanger. And then during the, the credits or after the credits, there's a title card that says, Miles Morales will return in Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, which I did not know was coming. I don't know how I missed that, but I did not know this was a trilogy or whatever, or that this was a two-parter. I, I was not aware of that. I thought this was going to be an encapsulated story. And it isn't. So we got another one to look forward to. But having broken down the plot, and believe me, that's the bare bones plot. There's a lot of nuance in there. And it is the nuance that really makes this movie shine. It's very good, this movie. I think it's the best thing that Marvel has put out in a long time. And, you know, not just by a little bit. I think it's way better than the last couple of live action Spider-Man movies. And I'm counting the most recent one, which in my own review, I said was not anything spectacular, despite everybody thinking that. Probably the strongest element of the story that has just so much heart is the relationship between Miles and Gwen. They are obviously very much into each other. I would say in love with each other. But Gwen knows that in every other universe, when Gwen Stacy and Spider-Man fall in love, Gwen Stacy always dies. And she also knows that as the first anomaly, he's like, you know, kind of like a pariah, as it were, who can't really be involved in anything because he is a potential, you know, multiverse breaker. So she has to kind of hide her feelings for him. And, you know, he's... Uh, like a lot of teenage boys afraid to reveal his feelings for her and it you know just hits you right in the feels whenever they're together because you know that they care for each other but they can't say so it's unfulfilled mutual affection and it's just so hard to watch but at the same time so great because you know that they just care about each other so much and it is the scenes that they are in together that that give this film the biggest dose of heart that it has, but there's a lot of other stuff in it that is also very powerful emotionally. Miles' relationship with his folks is one of those things. That's, that's a whole other element of the movie that just is so relatable and, and, you know, like I said, powerful and just hits you right in the feels. For an animated movie, and not that animated movies can't be powerful and strong and emotional, but... For an animated movie, this had those things in spades like I've never seen before. Um, I, I just, it just, it's full of heart and just a great story. And like I said, I think the best thing that Marvel has put out in a long time in terms of the story. And that is helped in great part by the performances of the voice cast. They're all excellent in this. So... I enjoyed it very much. You know, on top of all the heart, there's a great deal of action, which is absolutely frenetic and neck breaking in pace. <laughs> it's wild how fast and furious the action scenes, the action sequences are. It's dizzying, really. And uh, quite a sight to behold for that reason. So, you know, it's got everything, heart, action, great acting. It's it's just a, a fantastic movie. Now, I do have to say that I didn't love all of the animation styles that are showcased in the movie. 
the animation styles change from universe to universe. So you don't always have consistency of how, you know, the look of the film. And I thought some of it was hard to look at, especially when they had people from one universe in another universe. Sometimes the universe that the character comes from is really weird looking in. And so that carries over to the character. But then when the character is in a different universe that looks different from their own, they really stand out and it's kind of jarring. And so I had kind of a hard time with that. Some of the art, you know, and, and examples of that are Punk Spider-Man, who I forget what they actually call him in the movie, and the Vulture. They kind of don't, their visual style doesn't jive with the universe they're in. So it just, it looks very strange. And in addition to that, some of the animation in certain scenes and in certain universes seems like unfinished art. You know how art look? artwork can look unfinished if it's uh, just a line drawing for example that's going to go on to become a more fully realized image and you can see where you know that it's going to be something else when it's done but at the moment it's not done it's just the line art and so there would be sequences in the movie where part of the scene is fully realized but part of it is not and it just looks like the line drawing stage and so it was just kind of weird um I didn't, it, it looked kind of like visual noise some some part of the time, this, this movie, because uh, one of the universes is such that the people look kind of like, you know, normal animation of characters, but the background is rendered in such a way that it looks like impressionist, an impressionist painting. And I didn't think those two things went well together. And didn't like seeing an impressionist painting in motion. I'm I'm a fan of impressionist art, but it didn't work for me the way they sort of did it in this movie. But the writing and how you know how the characters move, the the the, the web swinging stuff and the the you know when they're using their spider abilities to walk around and whatever, um, which isn't always on a plane, an upright plane just uh is fantastic it, it's it's like i said dizzying and just so well done in, in terms of the movement animation and uh you know all the other elements of the film that i liked just really really made up for the fact that i wasn't entirely keen on how the art looked at all times so it, it ended up you know not being anything close to a deal breaker in terms of whether or not i like this I liked it very much. I really feel for Miles and Gwen. Like I said, they really care for each other and they it's difficult for them to be together because of various things. And that always gets me, you know, because you want to see people that care for each other be able to get together. So it, it did its job. It tugged at my heartstrings and, uh, you know, it, it gets you in the feels. But watching them overcome it, assuming they eventually will, is 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 what will be ultimately satisfying. So I'm hoping that that occurs. There are a bunch of Easter eggs in there that I know I didn't catch all of. The supporting spider characters, you know, are very cool. The one from Mumbatton is very cool. The punk rock one is cool in his own way, but he wasn't my favorite. So it's just a really, really good movie. You have to check it out as soon as you can if you're a Marvel fan. It's it's just really, really good. And, and I am looking forward to the next installment in the story. But that's really it. I'm going to get out of here. I will return with more videos soon. Until then, I wish you peace and long life.